beginning of the Cold War. In 1945, the Soviet Union, also known as the USSR, and the United States were allies against Germany and Japan during World War II. However, as early as 1947, basically the United States and the Soviet Union were engaged in a diplomatic as well as economic confrontation that will come close to war several different times. This is going to be characterized as the Cold War. Basically, it's without hot war, which would be literal confrontations of armies between the Soviet Union and the United States. This is going to occur over the next 40 years. And it basically becomes this competition economically around the globe, politically around the globe, and militarily around the globe. Really quick note here, a lot of times students will write Russia instead of the Soviet Union. Keep in mind, Russia is basically a state within the Soviet Union, and it is the largest state, but it would be the equivalent of calling all Americans like Texans. While all Texans are Americans, not all Americans are Texans. So while all Russians are members of the Soviet Union, not all members of the Soviet Union are Russian. So just kind of keep that in mind. So setting the stage for this, the Soviet Union, as we can see like on this map, is really gonna control Eastern Europe as a buffer zone. Whereas the United States is really gonna link both Western Europe and Japan into their alliance. And really America is gonna have overwhelming economic power. We're also gonna see this competition though like militarily through things like the space race as well as the arms race and like atomic bombs. And then both sides are looking for political advantage across the globe. Each side really views each other in the worst terms possible. And the Soviet Union is fearful of an aggressive West, which think about like the actions America took at the end of World War II, things like the bombing of Dresden and use of the atomic bombs and things like that could be viewed as very as aggressive. But the United States, on the other hand, is re really fearful of a communist expansion. And so both sides are really going to view every action taken by the other side in the most threatening of terms. And so we see all these things like miscalculations and misunderstandings becoming complete crises. So a lot of this actually goes back to the Yalta conference back in February of 1945, which keep in mind, like that was when FDR was still alive and he died about two months afterwards. What happened in this conference is the military is going to mark these rough spheres of influence, like you can see here in Europe. As you can see on the Eastern side, the Soviet Union really was the only military power in Eastern Europe. Whereas the Western allies are going to dominate a lot of Western Europe as well as the Mediterranean. And then there's Germany, and you can see that on this map. Germany is going to also be divided into occupational zones. And remember, it's actually split into four occupational zones, one being held by the Soviet Union, one by Great Britain, one by France, and one by the United States. But the three that are the United States, France, and Great Britain all together kind of make up West Germany. West Germany is going to hold a lot more people and really potential for industry than the Russian East zone of Germany. During the Alta Conference, basically the victorious powers, the Allied powers, put in these abroad agreements into operation, but they're going to argue about Germany and like Eastern Europe. The thing is, Eastern Europe is going to remain under the Soviet Union's control, but there's this question of, could it be open to Western influence politically and economically? The thing is, Truman very much wanted the United States to take a lead on running the world during this time period. 
and he's going to try to use economic pressure to do so the most. So it's things like the State Department would so-called mislaid, in quotes, the Soviet Union's request for redevelopment loans. On top of that, the United States and Great Britain would object to Soviet plans to take industrial equipment and like raw materials from the Western zone of Germany, which the Soviet Union felt like this compensation was promised to them, especially considering what the Soviet Union had done during World War II and how much they had given up. We also see the United States trying to take a role as the leader of the entire globe on some level. They are going to approve their membership into the United Nations. Uh, there's only going to be two opposing votes in the Senate, which is a huge difference compared to the whole League of Nations fiasco at the end of World War I. So in 1946, the United States is also going to present a plan to the United Nations to control atomic energy. Basically, they wanted to set up an international agency that would oversee all uranium production and research on atomic explosives. The thing is, what this really would do more than anything else is it would open up the Soviet Union nuclear effort to American interference because the Soviet Union was trying to build their own atomic bombs. And the Soviet Union found this unacceptable. Basically, while this is all going on, we're seeing the United States and Great Britain becoming more and more convinced of Soviet aggressiveness. Um, we see things like a diplomat in Moscow from the United States, George Cannon, is actually going to depict the Soviet Union as being driven by expansionist communist ideology. And he's going to argue that, oh, they're going to constantly probe for weaknesses in the capitalist world. And you should get to read this source uh, later in this class. Um, the United States does not fear an immediate military threat from the Soviet Union. They recognize the Soviet Union was exhausted after World War II. But as much as they're not worried about a military threat, the United States knew that they might be strong enough to brush that the Soviet Union might be strong enough to actually brush aside like United States occupational forces in Germany. And so that's where a lot of the focus comes to. There's also this concern about political and economic competition. And there's this worry that the Eastern Hemisphere might fall under Soviet Union control and communist control. Now, how correct was the United States in these concerns? The evidence is actually really mixed. The thing is, the Soviet Union during this time period is going to do things like it withdrew troops from Manchuria, China. Um, it basically let the United States control a defeated Japan. Also, the Soviet Union allowed neutral but democratic governments in like Finland. Technically, they allowed free elections in Hungary and Czechoslovakia as well, although they were really clear that the <laughs> communists would do well there. And the Soviet Union demobilized a lot of their huge army and reduced a lot of their fighting forces in Eastern Europe. So all these things combined show maybe the United States wasn't justified in their fears. However, what did justify American concerns was that the Soviet Union couldn't resist exerting influence like over the Middle East. They pressured Turkey to give it partial control of an exit on the Black Sea. Uh, the Soviet Union would retain troops in northern Iran until literally they were warned off by the United States. We also see the Soviet Union is ruthless in their support of communist controlled Eastern European countries between 1946 and 1947. So it's things like the Soviet Union helped aid a communist takeover of Bulgaria. They backed a coup in Romania and they undermined the last non-communist political opposition in Poland. Therefore, thinking about this issue, do you think the United States was correct in already fearing the Soviet Union at this point.